So a quick crash course on who I am and what my deal is. My name is Alex Bianchi. I'm a computer science student. I'm in the middle of a gap semester as I transition into a different school. And during this gap semester, I am spending my time learning data structures and algorithms in an attempt to prep for coding interviews and working on projects in an attempt to get those coding interviews so I can put the projects on my resume and hopefully get a bang ass internship in the fall slash for next summer. If you're interested in the data structures and algorithms and the interview prep part of that, then you can check out either the video that comes out before or after this I haven't determined which one I want to come out first yet but if you're interested in the projects then this is the video for you my, again my name is Alex Bianchi if you could please leave a like comment and subscribe all of that stuff helps out the channel a lot I, I really really appreciate every single comment hearing your stories talking with you guys engaging uh, so yeah that, that means a lot that all that that all gets read and responded to so please leave a comment down below without further ado let's get into it so a little bit of a history on my kind of coding journey thus far I started in the fall with an intro to CS class which I quickly surpassed because I immediately fell in love with programming I did all my programming in Python for those few months and at the time I was really interested in data science I still am for the record and in the winter, I dedicated myself a couple of months to learning as much data science as possible. That went really well. I did eventually hit kind of a roadblock with my lack of a mathematical understanding of the machine learning concepts that I was experimenting with. So I decided to take a break and kind of go deeper into just software engineering in general and kind of veer away from the analytical side. Definitely the more I learned about coding and software engineering through data science, the more I became interested in just straight up coding and software engineering. After going through a lot of stuff with the transfer dropping out of my school to so I could transfer to another one uh, just uh, lots lots of stuff later point being my goal now is a software engineering internship I kind of missed the mark on a lot of the internship applications that I, I could have applied to I, and I don't really have the best resume at the moment because I'm really starting from zero but this whole journey is is a guide to get me to somewhere decent and I'm really really confident that I can get there. And this first project is a big step in getting there. So this first project was a pathfinding visualizer and it was basically a way for me to teach myself a lot about front end web development. You see, after data science, I had turned to web development as a place to learn more code, learn how the internet works, and and really it just seemed like the, the easy next step before diving into anything too too complicated so i started doing free code camp and that was fantastic i did their html and css certification html and css is basically teach you the markup of a website so theoretically you can make a website that looks identical to google and facebook and youtube just with html and css it just wouldn't have any of the functionality so after i did that certification i moved on to their javascript certification which teaches you about the programming language JavaScript that basically runs behind all the websites that you know and love to engage with. That was pretty easy, a lot carried over from the Python that I had become pretty comfortable with, and that I had no problem with the JavaScript one. I, I found the certification pretty fun and challenging and rewarding because it also kind of taught myself the basis of data structures and algorithms. After that, I started moving into the React certification, and you can really think of React as a toolkit that you can use with JavaScript to build websites in a cleaner and more efficient fashion. About halfway through that certification, I kind of realized I just really want to build something. I've been doing a lot of learning, a lot of courses, and I loved Free Code Camp. Highly recommend them. Loved the courses. I plan on going back to finish the courses. But that being said, I just really wanted to build something and I had had a positive experience with doing that when I learned Bootstrap, which is a CSS framework, it's kind of the same thing, like a toolbox that helps you build websites better with CSS, which is what gives websites their animations. And having that positive experience with just reading the documentation, reading basically the instruction manual and building from there, I decided that I wanted to do the same thing with React, which was substantially more complicated. So I hopped off of the free code camp certification track, did React's a kind of introductory course module thing that they have in their documentation on their website, read up on the things that I thought would be important and got hacking away on my pathfinding visualizer. I chose the pathfinding visualizer because I had become kind of fascinated with them. I really liked the way they looked. I thought it would be a cool project. And, and a lot of people talk about it as a good first kind of intermediate project. I got a fair bit into the project all on my own. I got to the point where I had a two, two by two grid. I had the, the, everything was pretty responsive. I was able to select different nodes. I, I, I think I had the wall drawing capability, the start and end nodes, 
and everything was kind of coming together but I felt like I was missing some things and as I moved into kind of the algorithm section I realized that there was some, kind of a gap in my knowledge so I did consult a, a couple of YouTube videos kind of guides on the pathfinding algorithm but my my philosophy with them was I didn't want to be hand I didn't want to be handheld through the process so I would go to their video their tutorial whatever I would find the part that was directly applicable to whatever problem I was facing in the moment and I would kind of watch their reasoning, their explanation, their their code a little bit, and then I would implement it in my own code, in my own way, with my own understanding of things. And, and, I, and I didn't watch any single video in full. I kind of did that so that I was treating these guides as just like a Stack Overflow post and not, you know, going to the guide and just having them walk me through everything. I had done that before with a Pathfinding Visualizer in Python like two months ago. And I and I wanted to avoid that from happening again. It made sense two months ago. I didn't know as much, but I knew I was capable of doing it on my own now. And the project really just built piece by piece from the ground up. Once I had the grid laid out, it was a matter of adding start and end nodes, adding the ability to draw walls, adding the ability to reset the grid, adding the ability to change the location of the start and end nodes, adding the ability to have a random walls placed everywhere on the grid and, you know, adding the actual algorithm itself. The algorithm itself wasn't too complicated. Pseudocode is openly available on Wikipedia and the like. So it was really just a matter of implementing it into my particular grid solution, which basically just meant reading a lot of React documentation, some Stack Overflow posts to learn more React. And, and, I, and I got it working. I was really happy with it. I did steal some of the CSS from one of the guides that so, so I did steal some of the animations because I didn't feel like setting it up although I wound up tweaking them a lot anyways after I kind of had most of it set up the thing that I really wanted to implement was a maze I, I find the maze generation algorithms really fascinating really cool to look at really fun and I wanted to implement one so I, I noticed that a lot of people had done recursive division so I, I at first I tried recursive division, which is basically if you have your grid splitting it in half and then splitting those halves in halves and splitting those quarters in halves each and splitting those eighths in halves again, 16 and so on and so forth until you get to a granular level that you're happy with and then putting a wall in or putting a hole in each of those walls as you do it. And I had that implemented, but first the maze didn't look that good. It wound up having a lot of really long lines in it. And also the maze wasn't perfect. What a perfect maze is, is a maze where you can reach any point from any other point. Being that I'm building a pathfinding visualizer where there theoretically should be a path from the start to end node, it was a little bit of a problem. So I wound up canceling recursive division, just canceled it, the banned from Twitter, banned from Facebook, no more recursive division. I did wind up with a bit of a problem here that took me a while to solve. Really, I just wasn't thinking of the grid the right way. You can see in this kind of visualization here that for the algorithm in this situation, each node is clear, and has four walls. What I was doing was basically making the entire grid a wall. So in this visualization here, you can clearly see that the walls aren't grid pieces in and of themselves. So implementing that into my grid solution meant that I needed to mark some nodes in the first place as clear as kind of walking nodes, and then have the four nodes that they are neighbors with be walls that functionally just created a checkerboard pattern where you had the clear nodes and their neighbors which were treated as walls and once i got there if you can kind of visualize this if you can kind of work with me here then it was just implementing the same algorithm that could be implemented for any other maze i don't know that i did the best job at explaining that but i'm new i just learned it like a week ago so bear with me and after i figured out the maze algorithm i did some tweaks on everything and i was really happy with the final result i definitely want to make it a little bit prettier and kind of you know make it make it stand out more instead of just being a blank grid I, I saw this isometric design by someone online I think that's really awesome I gotta read his article figure out how he did it with CSS maybe I could implement something similar myself but uh, but yeah that's that's the visualization project I think it's substantial I think it's resume worthy and I think I learned a lot in the process so I'm looking forward in the future the next project that I want to do is a back-end project I really want to work on, uh, on you know, getting the back end, the server side of things going and experimenting with that, building a REST API. So that's on the to-do list. That's going to be the next couple of weeks working on that. And then from there, who knows, we'll see where we go. A little bit of a side note here. I also learned a lot about Git and GitHub, which is a version control system 
for programs that software engineers use and that was a really valuable experience because this was my first time working with like large chunks of code that I wanted to eventually deploy to the internet and and it wasn't being handed to me by anyone it wasn't in a code pen online it was all on my on my computer on my file system in my uh, uh, coding editor programming editor whatever visual studio code so so it was having my own environment set up was really interesting and i enjoyed the process a lot so yeah that's gonna be it for this video guys if you guys could please leave a like comment subscribe it all helps out the channel a lot peace